Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I want to do the second part of this M Sound Factory physical modeling video. So last time I talked about using the resonator, and today I'll get into a little bit more things you can do with it. Uh, so this is what we came up with last time. So a nice little sound. I'm going to turn some of these effects off. And what I want to show you is some other things you can do with this besides just using like two of these together. That's somewhat interesting, but it's not really what I want to show you. I'll show you a little bit more advanced stuff. So here, let's go into B. So this is just another one so I can switch back and forth between them. I'll show you something I made. So let's look at the base here and this electric base. So we go here and Here's what we have, basically. So, I'll let you hear it. So, it's like an electric bass sound. Now, it has a few different modes here. So, normal mode is just, um, I guess, monophonic. If I, I can set it to polyphonic and play chords. Or I can set it to portamento mode, so I can slide between notes. And you can, of course, adjust the times however you like the portamento time. Now, it has a tone knob here. That's just a low-pass filter that's easy to understand. And the things that might not be so easy to understand are the mute. Actually, I showed you how to do this last time, but I'll, I'll show you again. The harmonics. The vibrato is fairly easy to understand. I'm just using uh, the mod wheel to control this and the vibrato depth and speed. Only thing those are controlling are the uh, an LFO connected to the strings, or I said the resonators, since uh, control. Easy to understand. What might not be easy to understand also is this pluck position. So if I move this. Now, at first I saw these on other synths and I was like, how are they doing that? But I kind of figured it out. So I'll try to show you. And this pickup position. So here's the neck. So I'll show you how they do all these things. Uh, let me first start with the pluck position. So let's go into here, edit, and go into the generator. And you see here, it's actually not that complicated. You see, it's just like I showed before in the previous one. I have this, this uh, DS, or DRSN4, which is just a drum synthesizer, and it's using a sine sweep. And then I have two filters and a resonator. And you see, I just have something a little bit important for the low pass. It's a little bit lower, so that makes it sound more like a bass. I have the feedback at 98.5%. Uh, I just kind of did that by ear. That sounded right as far as uh, bass is sustain. You kind of have to set that by ear yourself. Here are the kind of important things. So in the last one, I showed you how you can use the low pass filter for the velocity and things. That's all this is doing. But the important one is here. Now the pluck position is controlled by this. And if you notice, it's a comb filter. So let's see here, pluck position here. If I move this pluck position like this, look at the frequency of this comb filter. So that's how you get the different plucking positions is by messing with a comb filter. Use a comb filter that is connected to the uh, pitch. It's like key tracked. And then have it alter the frequency of the comb filter. And here you had pluck variation, which I didn't uh, explain. But basically, this will just move it slightly each time. So if I do this, you look at the pluck position. Just slight variations. If I move it more, it does more. Thank you. 
So it's not always plucking in the exact same position. So that's kind of a uh, one that's easy to understand. So this is, I think, one of the great things is the power of comb filters. One of my favorite things recently. Uh, next one I'll show you is the mute and how I did that. I think that was easy to understand, though. All I'm doing is pushing this and the low pass filter moves. See, it moves down to 100 hertz. Move it back. So easy to understand, right? Uh, the harmonics. I think, how did I do this? I believe I also did this with the uh, comb filter, I think. There we go. Ah, I did. There. So when I hit the harmonics, you see it moves up from here to exactly zero. Frequency is zero. So it means the frequency is the same as whatever note I'm pressing. So it will play an octave up. If you want other harmonics, you can uh, move the frequency in uh, maybe different ratios. I want to say it's 0.7 is the fifth, but I'm not sure if that will sound out. So it might be an octave and 0.7 or an octave and 0.5. You'll have to experiment yourself. Uh, I haven't worked out the math. Um, actually, I did one time, but I forgot what it is. And so you can get different harmonics by doing that. And you also have to mess with the character a bit. Uh, sorry, not that to do this. Make sure the character is not too high, but not too low to get this. So that's how I did those. And one last thing is the pickup. And so the pickup here is controlled by a comb filter I have on the FX page. So the reason I use the comb filter and here on this page and not in the generator is because this comb filter doesn't need to be uh, tied to the pitch. It doesn't need to be key tracked. So it's using an FX and Things in the FX section generally use less CPU than in the generator section. So you see here I have the neck pickup. So I'm just messing with the gain a little bit and also the frequency. So the neck pickup sounds like this. A little bit more bassy and bridge pickup. A little bit more hollow and trebly. So you can mess with that and you can do it for different uh, frequencies in between there. I believe when I did this, I looked it up and there's like a mathematical formula that somebody had like some technical paper about this and they talked about it. I think I calculated it, but eh, you don't have to. You can kind of do it by ear if you like. So I think, did I explain everything? I hope I did. Uh, so that's it for like the base section. I'll try to show you a few more things you can do with this besides that. Um, let me see. Do I have any other interesting things I can show? Oh, also hooking them together in different ways. So one I've been working on that hasn't been working all that well, actually, is uh, this flute. Huh? Maybe I shouldn't show it to you. <laughs> I don't have it working. But basically, the idea behind this is to get like a flute sound. I'm using noise, like white noise. It's going through like a bandpass filter into a resonator. And... This one, it's a little bit different because I have it an octave up. And then it's going into another resonator here and then back into another resonator, an octave up. And so combining these together will get that flute sound, hopefully. So like I'll show you the first one, the first resonator by itself. So it doesn't sound like much, but basically the idea behind this is it should sound like the, uh, I don't know, the first part of a flute so if you play the flute like i do it has uh just like the first third of it and you blow into there if you just have that part it actually doesn't sound like the whole flute so it should sound somewhat like this then you add the second part here and sounds more like a flute and then third one here Problem is I haven't you know really worked this out, so this is kind of a work in progress. But this is more like uh, waveguide synthesis, where you combine different resonators. So uh, you can do that too. Don't be afraid to combine different resonators. But as I said before, use the limiter. The limiter is your best friend because this can quickly turn into a crazy feedback loop. So also watch your volumes and other things. But this is one thing you can do with this. And uh, besides doing them in parallel, you can do them in series like this. But 
just be careful. You don't want to blow your ears out doing this. So hopefully this gave you some other ideas of things you can do with the resonator. Try to experiment yourself with different combinations of things. And one of the greatest things about M Sound Factory is you can use these physical modeling techniques with other things like uh, FM synthesis or just subtractive synthesis, etc. And don't think you have to use this, just this. Make sure you try some of these modulators like the envelopes, LFOs, uh, random modulators, etc. And also key scaling. Key scaling is sometimes really important to get the correct sound out of these instruments. But I hope this is uh, enough and hope it answered some questions. I'll be doing more about physical modeling because I showed you two different physical modeling modules today, but there's actually another one. And uh, when you combine all three together, you can come up with all sorts of wild and crazy unheard of things. But if you have a question, leave that below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. And until next time, see you.